Hello, and welcome. Um, so today, I, I'm going to be talking about this. This is uh, Doctor Who, the collection. Um, I don't know if you can hear any noise outside. And apologise about that if you can. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about this here. Which is uh, the collection, the series of releases. Um, I'm going to be going through these releases um, chronologically in order of um, when they were released, which is why we've got this up here first. This is season 12, Tom Baker's first season, and this was the first season released uh, on Blu ray. Um, this is not the initial release from 20. 18 um this is the second edition you can see on the bottom it might not focus on this camera um yeah it doesn't look like it's gonna focus does it will it no um it's not the most high, high tech high quality camera um unfortunately uh, but we work with what we've got yeah, but this is the second edition from 2020, I think. Um, I didn't get the initial release, obviously, in 2018. Um, like a lot of people, um, it was sold out before I had a chance. And I, I think I, I wasn't sure. I ummed and ahed a little bit. And and then it was sold out, so my mum was, you know, the decision was made for me. Um, but... You know, the more releases the book of them coming out, the more I really wished I'd, I'd been able to, to jump on board. And then as soon as this um, reissue was, was announced, basically, I I, uh, I thought, what the hell? And uh, to the plunge, um, I managed to find the other sets that have been released so far at that point, which have been, uh, it was season 12, and it was 19, then 18 then 10, then 23, I managed to get all of those for pretty good prices, not much more than um, than they'd initially retailed for, which was good. Um, and then, yeah, pre-ordered 26, which was on the way at the time, got this on the order, and then I've been, I've been following on, basically, with the collection, with every new release, uh, as, as they've been coming out, um, more or less. Um, I'm loving the releases so far, I'm a big fan. Um, we're coming up now to the midpoint through the collection with season nine, which is uh, the next one available is coming out um, very soon. It's on pre-order. Um, and that'll be halfway through the, the entire classic series. Um, it's very exciting. So uh, yeah, I thought I'd go through these sets just talk a little bit about them, go through them. They're very blue, isn't it? Very blue in here. Um, I thought I'd go through them and um, just yeah, talk about each set and about a little bit about the seasons and the stories and um, sort of chart the differences and how the, the sets have evolved in their presentation um, and uh, stuff like that. Um, I don't collect the um, the standard editions. Um, with the, which are smaller, they're thinner, they've got the Blu-ray line at the top. Um, I think they're great, I understand, I absolutely understand why, uh, why people get them. I know some people have the, the original limited releases, like this, um, and then they get the, um, standard editions as well. Um, I, I don't do that, I'm, I'm good with just, just these for now, but I think the standard editions are great and I would be very grateful of them had I not taken the plunge on, on these ones when I did um, but I don't get those um, they're about two years I think behind aren't they the most recent release of that was season 24 I think which was fairly recently um, but it's great for people who don't get these uh, they're st still able to get all the same content and I think it's, it's good that it's all 
ultimately, you know, the box is lovely, the box is lovely, all the artwork is beautiful, but the content that was in the discs, was on the discs, is the most important thing, so I think it's very good that people are still able to get that, all that content without having to get these things for ridiculous prices, um, and I think, you know, it being a, a smaller booklet with just the information of what's on the disc, I think it's, it's the right move, uh, it's the right thing to go for, but enough ramble, enough preamble, we're gonna, we're gonna get on with this now, so I will take it out of the little cardboard sleeve there, take this, let me know in the comments if you collect these, if you have these limited edition sets, do you keep the cardboard sleeves like these, do you throw them away? Uh, as you can see, I, I, I keep them, I really like them. I think it's very handy to be able to see offhand, you know, what stories there are, what special features especially. Um, you know, if if I uh, am just in the mood where I fancy watching a, a, a documentary, talk to a documentary on one of these sets, it's good to just be able to look and go, okay, what's on? Season 12, what's on season 10, what's on season 22, you know, stuff like that. Um, so I keep these, I like these. I know some people get rid of them though. I'll put that to one side. I will take a look at this. We obviously Tom Baker there. You can just about see. It's very, very bright in here, isn't it? Um, you can just about see. Uh, a suggestion of the vortex from his title sequence there, and then he's, he's here, and he's that's holding his, it's on his screwdriver there. All the monsters. Obviously you've got, of course, a Dalek. You've got a Cyberman there. The K1 robot. It's a Weren. It's Steyr, isn't it? I, can, I always want to say Lynx, but that's from uh, the Time Warrior, isn't it? Those are all your monsters. It's a lovely style, and I love that this is... I love that even though the sets have, have changed and have, uh, have progressed and they've, you know, evolved quite naturally, the, the basic theming is always the same. So you've got your, your booklet covered there. We'll open that in just a minute, but first we'll go through the discs. I'm going to try and be very careful about this. Um, the one thing I'm, I'm not massively keen on with these sets is this disc tray. Um, it's just glued in at the bottom. Um, and so you do feel like you have to be very, very careful with it, which I am, of course. And, you know, these are collector's items. They're not... You're not going to be throwing them around and and um, lobbying them and um, uh, not lobbying, lobbying. I think um, is what I meant. Um, but you know you're going to be careful with them. But the nature of these things, you really do have to because um, sometimes they they do feel very very delicate. Um, and there have been a few instances I'll, I'll talk about when we when we go to those sets of um, you know some disc trays. I've, I've had not loads of problems um, but one or two here and there um, but we'll go through the discs anyway so we've got disc one to a robot there you've got Tom another game I don't know why this camera ref 
excuses to focus on the on the little text at all. That was irritating. I might see if I can fix that for any other videos, but yeah. Let's go on, robot. You always I always feel like I have to hold the, the distro there. Um disc two. It's the arc in space. You got what we're in there. And um Noah, I think the character's name is. You can't really see in all this detail just because of the light and everything. I might see if I can do something about that. And editing maybe because it's very uh, very oversaturated, the light. Um, as I'm filming it, see what I can do about that maybe. Um, I'm sure you've already seen all these before. I know you know what these look like. Um, this is just for the pleasure of ASMR. Disc 3. Yeah, hold it straight. Is the Suntaran experiment? You are Harry, Sarah, and the Suntaran. I th I'm sure it's style. I'll have another look in the book. In the booklet. Disc 4. Is Genesis of the Daleks. I thought I heard something in there. I'm sorry. Genesis of the Daleks. That was in the Daleks there. Disc 5. Revenge of the Cybermen. Not the Cybermen. Cyber leader there. I always press down just, just to make sure the glue's intact. Disc 6, bonus disc is the TARDIS there, uh, we'll be right through the vortex, and then in the back there, lovely Tom Baker's face in the in the titles, on the back of the box, lovely discs, one thing that's interesting about the discs on this set, especially, is they're full of monsters, you know, you got Cybermen, you got Davros and the Daleks, you got a Sundaran, you got Wirren, got the robot and on the front as well you've got all your monsters Dalek, Cyberman, Robot, we're into a tower. in the more recent sets you always have the monsters on the front but the discs don't really um don't have the monsters on the set um not that either is, is necessarily better than the other it's just interesting to the note isn't it so we'll open this up here this is a uh, Again, th this is a very simple compared to more recent releases, but I really like it in its simplicity. And, you know, contextually, everyone knows that this was the first, this was the first release. So I think it's okay that it's a bit simpler. Um, it's still very effective. This lovely image here. I'm loving the book that you've got. Uh, a lovely image of the TARDIS there, 3D model of the TARDIS. I'll just close that for now. Take a look at the booklet. You've got your main characters there. That's so bright. Um, I'm doing this in, in the daytime, in daylight, but maybe that's a bit too bright. Um, and you can just sort of about see monsters there. You've got Dalek there, the robots up here. You've got to wear in there. And Cyberman there, no Sontaran on this image. On the back of the booklet here you've got a lovely photograph of Tom. So we'll open this up. I'm not going to read this out to you, but we'll just have a look. Here we go again. Doctor Who, 12 years young. Um, I love these booklets, I love the photos, I love the artwork for the booklets. Robot. I think in more recent sets as well, the information booklets have, have only become more in depth and more thorough than this. And this is not, you know, this is not an insignificant amount of writing, but the, the you know, the sets we get now, maybe less so season two because there's so many stories, but you know, some of the more recent sets have been packed, full. The, the booklets have been, you know, loads and loads of information. Lovely to see. That's a beautiful image, isn't it? Beautiful composite. Lovely 
binding does all the artwork on these sets is so good uh, yes style is style and sometimes It's still a pretty good uh, alien mask, even you know, for the 70s. I prefer the Time Warrior version, but that's still pretty good. Um, I really like the new Sondarans that we saw um, in Flux with Jodie Whittaker. Those are, I think, my favourite designs. They're a perfect mix of new and, new and old. Um, I hope those designs stick around for a long, long time because they're beautiful. They're so good. <laughs> Genesis of the Daleks, of course, what a fantastic story. I did, uh, I liked it the first time I saw it, but I didn't love it. But it was one of the first Doctor Who stories, classic Doctor Who stories I watched. So I was still sort of getting used to the format a little bit. Um, I watched it again on this set, and uh, I mean, yeah, it really is one of the best Doctor Who stories ever made, isn't it? You, you just can't argue with it, it's so good. And finally, Revenge. Of the Cybermen. And your bonus material. It's interesting that the Genesis of the Daleks Omnibus is on the bonus disc. I think if this was a, a season released, as I say more recently, you would have two discs for Genesis of the Daleks. I think. Maybe you wouldn't, I don't know. But, um, they seemed a, a little bit more inclined to do that these days, don't they? Just interesting, but that is season 12. Yeah, still a beautiful set, it's still, I think, one of my favorites, just visually. Uh, yeah, I love it. So, we'll move that out of the way. And we'll bring in season 19. This was the second set. This was the first one I got. I got this and the next set, which is season 18. This one here, I got these two together at, uh, um, it will have been Christmas, I think, 2019. Because um, at that point, the, the season 12 reissue had been announced. So I got these two for Christmas together and then picked up the others a little bit later after that. So these are more my introduction to the collection. Very 80s introduction for the 80s JNT. Um, the Atric Seasons. Um, I've, got, I've got all the others stacked on top of each other. I'm just making sure they don't all fall over and break. So this is season 19. This is um, Peter Davison. His first season. Um, my lovely set. Again, uh, this one's bigger, this one's eight discs, as opposed to season 12, which was six. Because there's seven stories in it and a bonus disc. So we'll take it out of the cardboard suitcase. Again, this, uh, as I said, I keep them all. You got all your stories there and all your special features and everything. Just pop that to one side. And then, these are your images. Um, I love the fact that this was the first one where you realised, oh, he's going to be holding something in every single set, is he? He's on Magic Starter, as you can see. And then you've got your, your monsters, obviously, your Cyberman front and centre. Earthshock is a great story. You've got the Master there, you've got a Terralactal leader, and that is Monarch from um, the Fort of Doomsday. Are there any others on this set? No, it does not appear that there are any other monsters on the front of this, which is curious, isn't it? This is from Castrofal, isn't it? This is the TARDIS heading towards is it event zero, like the big bang or something. From Castrofal, but it's a lovely image. That was good as season 12, but I still like it. So we'll open this up. This is, I don't know if you can see, it's a little bit, um, my disc. 
his tray's a bit lower than than the normal. It's a bit more inclined towards the bottom. So symmetry wise it's not as aesthetically pleasing, but you know, it's all there. So we'll um we'll take a look at the discs. Obviously there's eight discs to go through here, so There's one Castrovalva, you've got the doctor there in his scarf. Disc 2 for to Doomsday, you've got Adric is there in the spaceship. Isn't for to Doomsday what, the one where uh, the fifth doctor calls Adric a little idiot? Sounds about right. I like Adric well enough. A disc three, you can, it's very interesting. This disc, it's got an old woman on it. I don't remember the character's name. And then it's got the Mara in um, in one of those mirrors they use at the end of the story. Um, but it's a CGI Mara. I quite, I've always quite liked the puppet. Um, I know the director of the story didn't, or the writer, it might be everyone involved. They didn't like it. I don't know. I think it's got charm to it. Um, I think I saw a clip from the end of Kinder. Um, I think I, I was, um, it must have been on UK TV Gold a few years ago. I was um, sort of down south, I think, for a family member's wedding. We were staying at a hotel or a B&B, I think. Um, and yeah, just on the TV, they had UK TV Gold on. And it was the last episode of Kinder. Um, and so, yeah, I saw, just sort of out of context, a load of people stood in a circle with mirrors and a big puppet snake flailing about and uh, yeah so I've got a weird nostalgia to that that big puppet snake I really like it and then I think it was Frontios the star Frontios which is not a story I've seen it's either Frontios or Terminus I get them mixed up I've not seen either but it's the one where um, the TARDIS gets destroyed is the cliffhanger I think I think it must be um, from Dios. It's a, I think it's a season 21 one, because I'm sure it was Tegan and Turlo. Then again, that could be it. I don't remember, is what I'm saying. Um, until I've seen the story, I don't know which one it's from, but I, I remember it, certainly. The one with the tractators, I think. I think it must be from Dios. Anyway, uh, Disc 4 is a visitation. You've got Tegan and the robot there. It's interesting that they didn't put Tegan on the disc for Kinder. It's very much her story, isn't it? Kinder and Snake Dance. Again, I'm not seeing Snake Dance. I'm not seeing most of season 20, other than um, The Five Doctors. Hopefully season 20 will be coming out soon. It feels like for the last five years we've been saying season 20 is going to be the next set. Um, I do genuinely believe it will be the one after season 9. It'll come out eventually. We'll get them all eventually. Mm. Disc 5, Black Orchid. I don't mind Black Orchid. It's a fun bit of two episodes of love. You've got Nissa and... Is it Anne? The character's name. Uh, and then the Black Orchid behind them. Alright. Disc 6. Earthshock. You've got Adric there, of course, and this side. Is that just a Cyberman, not a Cyber Leader? Of course, Earthshock. Ooh, disc 7. Time Flight. You've got uh, the Master in his dodgy disguise. No. It's a plasmodon or something, whatever they call it in that story. Slip that back in there. Uh, whoa. Reach in right at the bottom. Disc 8. There's the bonus disc with the TARDIS, of course. And then at the back there, Peter Davison in the title. Um, and then we all, what we do, we press down press down just to make sure it's in there safely 
um, this was a set, this was one where, um, just talking about the disc tray, when it arrived, the disc tray was right up against here. Um, so what I had to do was, um, because it was right up against the edge, I just couldn't um, get reach the discs. So what I did was I took the set um, and left it like that for a, a while, an hour or two maybe, uh, opened it up again and it, basically the disc tray had slid um, into position. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I'm not saying you should do it to your sets if you have a similar problem. But what I am saying is that I did do that and it did work and the disc tray hasn't come loose since. So, you know, if you have a similar problem, that could be a potential solution. But what's very important is that if it breaks, uh, I'm not responsible for that. It's a, it's a risky strategy. I wouldn't recommend it, but it, but it did work for me once. <laughs> what I'll do now is we'll open up this buckle flap. This is from Vault to Doomsday, isn't it? We're starting to get a little bit more elaborate. Still fairly simple, but a little bit more elaborate here. So we open this up. I'm just cautious that sometimes I think this camera cuts off at a certain point. Um, and immediately starts recording again, but I don't want it to cut off mid sentence. But if that does happen, so I'll just move that out. You see here, yeah, you've got to, you have the TARDIS. It's very simple. Yeah, see, yeah, that's just cut out for a second there. Um, so if that's missed a couple of seconds, I might have to cut around that. Um, but you see here, yeah, you've got the TARDIS there. Lovely 80s TARDIS, although not quite the 80s TARDIS yet. It's not being shot up by the Cybermen. And then we'll open the booklet here. It's a lovely image on the front, isn't it? And on the back there, you've got Peter Davison smiling. So we'll open this up. Doctor Who regenerated. Welcome to season 19, it says. So, Castrovalo. Uh, not not uh, a story I love, Castrovalo. I, I enjoyed it well enough, but didn't do all that much for me. Um, and I found the music, I know some people really like it, but I found it quite twee in a, in a bad way. Um, I might have to give it another go. It was a while since I watched it, but... It was fine, I did, but not my favourite. Um, Fall to Doomsday, I quite like this one. I, I thought it was underrated, I don't know why. It doesn't get its dues, it's, uh, it was good fun. Fall to Doomsday, I liked it. Kinder, uh, obviously Kinder's really good. I think everyone agrees Kinder's good, right? Don't they? They should, Kinder's good. Um, I just checked, I don't. I'm just checking, I'm still recording. Um, yeah, Kinder's really good again, that, that digital snake. I've only, I have only watched Kinder once, and I did watch it with the puppet. As I say, I like the puppet. I think I'll always watch it with the puppet. Um, I don't know, maybe next time I watch it, I'll watch it with the, uh, with the CGI snake. The Visitation. Another good story, another fun one. A lovely behind the scenes is there. Uh, Black Orchid, I didn't mind this one, it's uh, a fine bit of love. And I, I, I like the fact that, you know, the 80s can just sneak up with a cheeky little two-part pure historical without explanation. Um, yeah, I think it's just good fun. I, I, I don't mind it. Earthshock, of course, is standing out of the story, and it is a great story. I've seen Earthshock a few times because I had it on DVD first. So I watched it on DVD and then I watched it again on Blu-ray. Maybe I've watched it three times. I think I have as well, actually. 
I think that was one of the ones. My mother was, was like, oh, I wouldn't mind watching some classic Doctor Who. Because she'd not watched, like, she watched a little bit when she grew up, like, John Bird, who I think was her doctor. Um, but I'm much more into it, into the show, um, than she is. But she was like, I wouldn't mind watching some old ones. Um, so I picked her shop to show her. And didn't tell her about the Cyberman, didn't tell her about Patrick dying. I don't think she was that impressed, to be honest. I don't think she hated it, but, you know, she... Yeah, you know, I, thought she, I think she thought it was fine. Um, but, you know, the rest of it, all as normal people, all as normal people, we love her chock as we should, because it's a great story. Uh, Saber's best, I think, of what I've seen. I've not seen all Saber's stories, I don't think. Although, well, no, because I've seen Earthshock, I've seen Re Resurrection of the Daleks, um, I've seen Revelation of the Daleks, and Attack of the Cybermen is written by Eric Saber, even though it's not credited to him. Did he do any others? It's my favourite of, of those four, anyway. Um, maybe he did others, I don't know. And he was script editor, of course. Uh, and Time Flight, which I didn't hate as much as its reputation, but it's not a great story. Um, a weird end of the season. And then your bonus material there. <clears throat> so, yeah, all in all, I think season 19 is a really good season. Um, it's very strong stories. There's really only one in there that I, that I don't care for, which is uh, Time Flight. Well, too, because I'm not all that big on Castor of Alpha, but there's none that I would be hesitant to rewatch. Uh, or would skip on a marathon or anything like that. I don't skip on marathons anyway. Um, marathons aren't meant to be easy, you know. you gotta you got to take the good with the bad. If I'm doing a marathon of New Who, you know, you watch it all. You can't just have your good episodes like your Empty Childs and Wars of Mars and Heaven Sent. you got to throw in your fears. you got to throw in your In the Forest of the Nights, you know. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's not a story in here that I really, really don't like and want, want to watch again. Um, and it's, yeah, I, I really hope we get another Davison set soon because we desperately need to. So I'll move this out of the way now. Season 18, this is Tom Baker's final season, seventh and final season. <laughs> this image it's beautiful and 
Warrior's Gate is in the white void, so it still fits within the sort of theme of these things. Um, it's such a great picture. Such a great imagery for that story. Season 18 is an odd season. I'd not seen it. I'd not seen it before. Uh, before I got it, I didn't know really anything about the stories. Other than Lacopolis, because it was Tom's last. Uh, but I enjoyed it. Um, I, I, I quite liked it. There, there's not a story in there that really stands out. Always, you know, the best of the best. Or anything, there's nothing that I would put in a top 10 or, or even top 20. But nothing is awful. It's, it's a very consistent season. And I think sometimes, you know, you, it's fair to sometimes I prefer a consistent season over a season with very high highs, but also very low lows. And season 18 is consistent in its quality, I think. So I'll open this up. It's just a little bit more um, elaborate now with the image. This is the first time we've had a like a dot is in a place in a location from one of the stories. Now, say, look at that. My my season eighteen discs are bunched up again, so I might try the old uh, shifting them technique because I'm not sure how I'm gonna get to these uh, to these discs. And say, we'll hold it like that for a few minutes. See what we can do. Try not to break it. sure that's moved though because they weren't like that the last time I opened this set. Open it up again. Yeah not much has happened there. I might have to might have to leave that a bit longer. We'll see what we can do with getting these discs out but it's gonna be tricky. Alright. So disc one is the Leisure Hive. Crikey, this is... Uh... Right, what we'll do, we'll go like this. Oh, well, we? Oh. Um, we might have to go backwards. I'll tell you what, we'll go backwards. So we'll start at the end. So, Canine and Company. Um, I had not seen Canine and Company. I love the fact it's on this... Uh, um, it's not a great story, is it? But I love the fact it's included. I had good fun watching this with a mate. Um, great to have it. Got Tom there in the back. I wonder when that moved like that, those discs. Uh, anyway, disc seven is Lockopolis. Lockopolis. Got Tom there. Let me start this. Disc six is the keeper of Draken. Disc five, Warrior's Gate. A lot of Tharrell there and uh, this like outline of a TARDIS. Disc four is State of Decay. Well, the Doctor and Lana and the TARDIS there. Very much a hero shot. story. Disc 2 is a Megloss of Zero Mana. You've got the Megloss guy there and, um, and Jacqueline Hill of course. Barbara Wright herself wrote in to play uh, some woman in Megloss. That was nice, isn't it? And then of course Disc 1, The Leisure Hive. Um, yeah, I think this disc tray has moved because I'm sure I did not have the same sort of trouble getting to those discs. Because um, you simply cannot get your finger in there at all. 
so I might have to try the same technique, which again I don't really recommend, um, as I did with season 19, oh well, you can still reach them, you can still get to them, but yeah, it's, uh, it's not the best presentation, sometimes you do get problems like that, anyway, we'll open up this flat bit, um, got this, surrounded by entropy and you might not be able to see it from here maybe you can just about just about make out the watcher there um, I forgot to show you as well in, in this you've got the TARDIS with a, with a TARDIS in it Locopolis it's a very Locopolis Locopolis uh, themed set try saying that Three times fast, look up this, 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 look up this. It's a very good ASMR, what is it? Very triggering. <laughs> so we've got Tom here in his TARDIS on the back. A lovely portrait of Tom, and again. TARDIS in a TARDIS It's the end that the moment has been prepared for Lovely photo of Tom there What does he say? It was a shock to realise this is it, the finish But the time had come It's a little quote there So, stories The Leisure Hive uh, yeah, I didn't mind the leisure hive. It was fine. Um, good fun. Not nothing special, but you know, it wasn't awful at all. Uh, for Marcy. Um, I love the for Marcy. Bring them back. Who needs a Slitheen when you've got for Marcy? Meklos. Again, one with a bad reputation, but I didn't mind it. I thought Tom was good as the Doctor and Meklos. And that's just a great image. Megloss Doctor, isn't it? Full Circle. Uh, again, fun story. Written by an 18-year-old, which is incredible. Andrew Smith, 18, when he wrote it. Which is, uh, very, very impressive. State of Decay. Very gothic horror. Very Tom Baker. Era. Sort of a story, isn't it? I enjoyed State of Decay. Warriors Gate. I think I'm gonna have to watch it again because you know, didn't really get it the first time. Um, <laughs> it wasn't bad, but it's just weird, isn't it? And that's not bad, but you know, it, it, yeah, I think I just need to watch it again. Give it another another shot, maybe. Uh, the Keeper of Draken was probably my favourite of the season. Um, I I really enjoyed it. Remember. Yeah. It's been a while since I've watched these stories. As I say, I got the, I got this set um, Christmas twenty nineteen, so three about three years ago now since I watched some of these stories. So I don't uh, don't remember them all brilliantly well, uh, but I I enjoy I remember enjoying them all so. And a Lookopolis, which is a not good, not, not excellent story for Tom's last story, but it's, uh, it's decent nonetheless. I, I enjoyed it. So. And then K9 and Company, of course, information about K9 and Company, a girl's best friend. Now and then your bonus material. So that was season 18, it was very interesting to get that one sort of right out of the gate, wasn't it? Um, but a good set nonetheless. Um, and it was nice to have these stories that I didn't really know anything about, I hadn't seen at all. So it was good to sort of get them and get a bit more information about them, you know. Um, shame about the 
let this dry out. We'll see what I can do about that. Season 10. I was going to say season 3 then. It's not season 3, it's Doctor 3, but it's season 10. Just a lovely set. It's very washed out. Eh? You, you, you can't quite get all the, the lovely greens and yellows and everything here, can you? But it's a beautiful set. Um, so I'm taking that. It's a slipcase there. Again, this is a lovely, vibrant green. Again, it's very washed out on my camera, but it's very it's vibrant in person. Um, all your stories, three doctors, carnival of monsters, frontier in space, planet of the Daleks, and the Green Death. All good stories. Um, I seem to remember the first thing I watched on this set, though, was um, the, the Death of the Doctor and the Sarah Jane Avengers. I'm not sure why, I think I just fancied watching it and it was there, so I did, but I have, I've watched all the stories, of course, as well. I had seen um, The Three Doctors and Carnival of Monsters before, because um, I had this on DVD, they came in, a, in revisitation boxes, didn't they? Um, so I had seen those, I don't think I've watched them again since on, on Blu-ray, so I might do that because it's been a while um, since I've watched them, but I enjoyed them certainly. So let's take a look. We've got John Pertwee, uh, of course, on this Sonic Screwdriver there. And then the monsters we've got for this season. We've got Omega, sort of, not front and centre, but back, back and centre, I suppose. <laughs> we've got your Supreme Dalek from Planet of the Daleks. That's a great Dalek design, isn't it? We've got uh, two other Daleks from uh, uh, Planet of the Daleks as well, although I suppose uh, from Deer in Space. Got, uh, speaking of Frontier in Space, you've also got a Draconian. Uh, again, that's not focusing really, is it? You've got a Draconian and an Ogron there. Nothing from Green Death, nothing from Carnival of Monsters. Check out. Although, you know, one of mine did a Jurassic on there, but hey ho. Um, so, those are your monsters for season 10. On the back of the box, you've got. This is from the Three Doctors, this is the TARDIS and Unit HQ here going into the black hole of Omega's anti-matter universe. Right? That sounds about right. That's a lovely image. And that black, I mean, it is just pure black, isn't it? It's a great contrast to the blues and the greys of the boxes. Um, this box and, and all the others. So, yeah, that's a good image. I really like that one. I don't know if it's my favourite. I don't think so, but I do like it. So we'll open this up. This, I think, is the most elaborate. These disc flaps are gone. And I think after this, they stopped printing on the, on this middle bit. I think I saw a thing with Lee Binding, who does the artwork. I think he said that basically they had to stop doing that because... It just wouldn't align properly and it was creating lots of problems, which is a shame because this this is great, but so got the disc here, so disc one. The three doctors. We got John, Patrick and Bill. I don't know why I said in that order. The three doctors there. Beautiful. That's from the Radio Times cover, isn't it? Lovely. Disc 2 is Carnival of Monsters. Two characters, if I don't remember that, he's called Vogue, isn't he? And that's uh, uh, some other guy, I don't remember his name. From uh, Carnival of Monsters. There's a sequel story to this, did you know that? The uh, Doctor Who Live, the Monsters Are Coming live sh show um, from 2010 is a sequel to Carnival of Monsters. It's a fun little fact for you. Google it. Disc 3, Frontier in Space. We 
you got a doctor and a draconian there. Beautiful. Disc four, Planet of the Daleks. Obviously a doctor in the in her cloak, Spiridon cloak. It is Spiridon this story, isn't it? And now, and a Dalek there. You might be able to hear my dog moving about. He's just, he's just, off he goes. Disc five, this is the green death. You've got John, John Birdsby as a washerwoman there. That's very funny on that disc, I love that. Um, the good sense of humour. And disc six, bonus disc is the TARDIS, of course. Very simple, very elegant, and of course, lovely John Bertrand smile and face in the title sequence on the back of the box. Not on the back of the... Uh, you know what I mean? And then we come over to uh, the buckle flap. Uh, so we'll open this one. Again, this image we saw earlier. This is the TARDIS from the Three Doctors. So you've got Bill Hartnell on the monitor there, and Patrick Stroud, Patrick Chan's recorder there in the little thing that is in, in that story. And then the booklet here. The first milestone. Welcome to season 10. So we've got the three doctors. I enjoy the three doctors. It's, uh, it's good fun. It's not the most, uh, most, uh, it's not the, 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 the uh, best story ever, but it's, uh, I enjoy it well enough. Carnival of Monsters, which I really enjoyed, I seem to remember. I should watch it again, it's been a while. And I'm not watched on the Blu-ray, so maybe, maybe I should. But I did really enjoy Carnival of Monsters. I often find, I uh, when I get these Blu-rays, certainly more recently, uh, and if it's a season with a lot of stories I've not seen, I'll, I'll watch it all through, and then it's like done, completed that season. Uh, but then I don't go back to, I don't go back to it. I've not been back to many of the stories on these sets. Um, mostly because... There's always a new set coming out and other stories I've not seen. Um, you know, I'm, I'm working my way through season two, but I don't know that I'll finish it um, before season nine comes out. And I've also been watching some of the Troughton uh, animations recently. I, I've not come around to those until very recently. So, you know, there's still some DVDs that I've got. I've not seen the stories, so I'm always working my way through them. Um, but I should rewatch Carnival of Monsters because it was very good. I remember enjoying it, and I'm not seen it in a while. There's lots of information here about Carnival of Monsters on there. Wow, loads. Keep a bit more sec. A frontier in space. This one was alright. I uh, I'm, I'm more used to six parters now. Like I, I'm, uh, I get along a lot better with them than I used to when I first started. A classic who I think that's the case for everyone though isn't it uh, I did struggle a little bit there at first um, but I like six parts now and Frontier in Space was uh, was good Planet of the Daleks I remember that was that was fine that was good it's a reliable Terry Nation Dalek story so nothing special but um, enjoyable nonetheless And the Green Death, which uh, yeah lives up to his reputation. It is a great story, isn't it? Green Death, and it's very sad at the end, of course. And then bonus disc, Doctor Who and the Third Man. Actually, I watched that documentary recently. Um, I don't know if I watched it when I first got the set. I can't remember, but I watched it either for the first time 
recently or again recently and uh, it has a great documentary the green death omnibus again like genesis of the daleks i think if this was released now this season i think you'd have two discs for the green death alas and then of course on the back here you've got dr vertigo and john birds with the blood gel cards there so So next up is season uh, 23, Trial of a Time Lord. Uh, yeah, this was good. Again, the, the image here is too washed out. I, I should change that really for, uh, if I do any more videos like this. But this is a very vibrant, very colourful image. Um, one of my favourite uh, images of these sets, I think. I, I uh, this was the only season that I had seen all the stories of before I got the box set because it's one continuous story, it's just the trial of a time lord uh, you see on the back here again this looks, I mean through my camera this looks sort of purple almost but it's a lovely um, sort of deep pink uh, lilac, no not quite lilac, yeah sort of a burgundy pink on the back here, it's beautiful but you see here it's just the Trial of a Time Lord. So I did have the Trial of a Time Lord um, DVD set. Um, and then when, when I knew I was getting this, um, I, I breezed through that DVD set. So I don't think I've actually watched any of these stories on Blu-ray. But um, I did really enjoy uh, Trial of a Time Lord. It, it, it was good fun. It's very flawed, certainly. But I enjoyed it nonetheless. And I enjoyed a lot. Extras, I really because I'd seen all the stories. Um, when I got this, I was really able to del delve straight into behind the sofa and um, um, the doctor's table. Um, and I think there's a writer's room, is there about the unmade season 23, maybe? Um, so you've got your monsters, of course, you've got the value out there, the inquisitor, you've got a vervoid, Strathro, you've got Sil. There. And of course, this is the opening of the uh, of the whole story, and he's holding that's from the last part, isn't it? I mean, that's a beautiful image that I love having it on the cover, but I also love having it on the back. Look at that! That's beautiful, isn't it? What a great image! What a great start to the season. stop printing in the side now but uh, yeah so we'll go through these discs so disc one is the trial of a time lord episodes one to four uh, the mysterious planet a doctor in the dark is there uh, disc two the trial of a time lord episodes five to eight to mind war Disc 3, which is Terror of the Vervoids. You've got some Vervoids there. And uh, I don't know what that is. Not Vervoids. Uh, cocoons or something, maybe. Been a while since I've watched it. Uh, disc 4, in this episode is 13 to 14. The Ultimate Foe. You've got the Doctor and Mr. Bubble there. I remember his name. Because it's a fun name. Mr. Bubblewick. Uh, bonus disc 1, disc 5 is the Inquisitor and the Valyard in the background there. And 
disc six burn is disc two is the doctor and the TARDIS there and then of course Smiley Colin Baker from the title sequence is there so those are your discs we'll open this up this is a lovely image I think this might be one of the best again uh, at the moment looking through the camera it looks a little washed out but it's not it's certainly not it's a lovely green sky and pink sea and pink tints on the windows and everything it's a beautiful image beautiful beautiful image i might see if i can um take the contrast up a little bit i think when i edit this because uh because you i just can't it's all it just looks all blue at the moment so hopefully if you're seeing this um I've been able to fix that a little bit. That's a lovely image of the trial and Perry's death. Well, if Perry doesn't die, which means she can come back in the show, and she should, because Perry's a great companion. I really like her. <laughs> Keep hitting my mic. That's in my mic, it's in my phone. Um, you got this here, the TARDIS. You got the exercise bike and the ship from. Um, that is Terry the Bird Boy, doesn't it? There's that. And then, look through the booklet on the back there, you've got, uh, you've got Colin, smiling Colin. Season 23, so. Doctor Who on trial. Welcome to season 23. Time Lord, so this is a mysterious planet. It's a deleted extended scenes, lots of uh, lots of bonus features there, and lots of information about the mysterious planet. That uh, this was a fine start to the season. Is Terrence Sticks, isn't it? I think. No, sorry, Robert Holmes. Robert Holmes. Um, yeah, I mean it was. It's fine. And it's his last story because he died halfway through the production of the season, didn't he? I think. God. Um, rest in peace, Robert Holmes. Yeah. Um, Mysterious Planet is fine. It's a decent story. It's been too long since I've watched it, really. There's lots of information there, isn't there? Again, the trial of a time lord. This is mind warped now. I again enjoyed um, Mind Warp, but not the best story. It's okay, but you know, before this season, before this release, I think everyone sort of agreed that Mind Warp was the best story in this in this bunch. But I'm not sure that's really the, the consensus anymore. Then we got to Sarah. So this is a 2019 full part special edition with updated special effects and omitting the courtroom material to create a new standalone version of the story. I've not watched that. I think I might do. Um, I've only watched Terror within the context of the trial. Um, so I'll have to check out um, this version. The standalone version. Because I enjoyed the story. Um, and then the trial stuff is also there, but, yeah. And, what, and then, trial for time lords is uh, the ultimate foe now. And then, uh, yeah, you've got all this stuff. That's a nice image, isn't it? There on the left. On the bow yard and everything. Very well known image in the Fantasy Factory. And then bonus discs. So on bonus disc one, you have uh, alternate edits from parts one to eight. These extended and alternate edits are based on the director's initial cuts uh, for each episode. 
Most episodes contain screen scene exceptions and entire sequences that were removed before transmission. While some episodes are not much longer than the final broadcast versions, they may contain alternate alternative takes or a different story structure. Uh, and then on this two you have parts nine to fourteen, and then Doctor Cookbook revisited um, other stuff like that. Again, I've not watched the alternate edits. Maybe I will, you know. Um, when I next rewatch Trial of the Time Lord, maybe I'll watch the uh, the alternate versions uh, presented here. Because, you know, I watched the DVD versions, but and the versions as presented and as transmitted, but yeah, I've not watched those alternate versions, so maybe that's, uh, maybe that's the one I'll go for, the version I'll go for. Um, and that's the great thing about having these sets and the different versions is that you're able to watch the stories. Um, someone like me, I'm able to watch stories I've not seen before, but if you're someone who has seen the stories before, there's there's different versions, there's lots of bonus materials, so it's, you know, you, you get to see stories again in different ways, and the new versions of stories you've seen before, and stuff like that. It's, uh, you know, it satisfies everyone. So what I'm going to do, we'll look at one more, because this video is getting on a little bit. Quacking on for about an hour now, I think. Um, so we'll talk about one more, which is season 26. And I'm going to, uh, we'll talk about this. Um, this to me, um, don't ask me why, but in my head, um, I sort of split. The collection releases into like waves um, of, of, of releases so in my head and don't ask me why maybe it's because of when I started started when I jumped on board with the collection but to me season 26 is very much um, the end of wave wave one um, you know it's the last uh, set that was announced before I started getting these um, you know, the next one after this was season 14, and I just got that, I just ordered that, along with everyone else. Um, so, I'm going to, yeah, stop it. And also, there have been 12 sets released so far, and this is set number 6. So, we'll look at this, and then uh, I will do a part 2, and we'll look at the uh, the six uh, sets, the next 6 sets released after this. Um, which is season 14. Uh, 14, 8, 24, 17, 22, and 2. We'll look at those in, uh, in another video. So we'll take this out of its, uh, out of its box. There, so you see Doctor Who the Collection Season 26 there. And again, this is a, it looks sort of purple to me through, through the camera, but it's a very deep crimson burgundy there. Oh, yeah, special features and everything. Lovely, beautiful. And then the box there, you've got obviously McCoy with his umbrella and assortment of villains there. You've got um, the Master, of course. You've got a light from Ghost Light. This is the Destroyer from Battlefield. She's from Battlefield. He's from Battlefield. And that's the theme of all from uh, the Ghost of Family. <laughs> Turn this over, have a look at this image with just the TARDIS in the in sequence. Which is great, isn't it? It's beautiful that. You don't really see the TARDIS much in this season, so it's, it makes sense that you would have that image there. And then we open it up. You got the TARDIS in the rain, surrounded by hemophores from the Ghost of Fenric. And your discs here, so. Disc 1. Battlefield, you got the Doctor and Ace there. Disc 2 is also Battlefield. You got the two Brigadiers there, Lethbridge, Stewart, and Bambera. Disc 
three is Ghost Slime. I don't remember these characters' names. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't remember them. It has a weird story in it, Ghost Slime. Which is not a hot take, but, you know. Disc, um, Disc 4, The Ghost of Fenric is Ace there. Disc 5 is also the curse of Fenric. You got this guy surrounded by, I forget his name as well, surrounded by uh, Aemovals. That was one of my favourite disc images, I think. It's a lovely, isn't it? What is that further? Uh, disc set, uh, 6 is Survival. Hero Shard the Doctor. Lovely. And. Disc 7, the bonus disc is of course, as always, the TARDIS, and then you've got the Doctor. You can't tell if he's winking there, because the thing for the disc is right over his eye. But he's there. Beautiful, lovely. So we'll open up this book with that. We have this image here. Survival. If we fight like animals, we die like animals. It's a lovely composite, isn't it? Whoa. Just casually knock my camera over. Try, uh, try not to do that again. Um, not right now. And then we see the TARDIS there, blacking out TARDIS because they jumped the set. And it was just a black curtain with some roundels on it. So. But this is the approximation of that. It's made up for this, uh, you, you don't see it. <clears throat> and then the booklet. So yeah, as you see, you've got the Doctor about to bash the Master's head in with a big rock from survival. We're dropping these all over the place. Not to fingers much. And then you've got Sylvester there, a couple of cheetah people.
giving you more information, although there are only four stories, so I suppose it evens out. Uh, the Curse of Fenric. Again, uh, three versions. You've got your TV version, your special edition, and your extended VHS version. Um, so I might watch a different version of Curse of Fenric if I watch that again. I enjoyed Curse of Fenric. I didn't love it as much as some people, but I did uh, like it. But I think I do need to watch it again. Because uh, I, I didn't watch season 26 in order when I got the set. I went straight to Curse of Fenric. Um, and I think the McCoy years, especially, um, really benefit from watching in order. So uh, maybe when season 25 comes out, um, I'll watch... Uh, in order because I've seen Remembrance of the Daleks and Greater Show in the Galaxy from season 25 so certainly two stories I've not seen but. and then Survival which I really liked Survival I, it was good fun um, lots of great images and the Doctor and the Master and the Born One and everything that's uh, a hill and pace isn't it also info about Survival last story and then the bonus disc, which is Soviet Aldrin in Conversation. I think I did watch that. Uh, that they're, they're always really good. The Chance with Matthew Sweet. The Showman, The Life of John Nathan Turner. That was a really good documentary. Um, and then I've not, I don't think I've watched this other stuff yet. Endgame and New Peter and stuff. But, um, maybe I should, maybe I will. Uh, eventually. I do come back to uh, the special features. As I say, I watched Doctor Who and the Third Man not long ago. I've not watched much of season 10 recently, so... Yeah, sometimes I come back to the special features, uh, even if I'm not watching the stories. Because uh, they're, always, they're always very good, aren't they? So... That is season 26. And that will do it for this video. So, yeah, um, like and, and subscribe and comment and all those things if you did like it. Um, and don't do those things if you didn't, I suppose. I'll do a part two of this video and go through all the other sets, the six other sets that I didn't talk about today. Um, but yeah, other than that, thank you for watching. If you're still here, um, let me know which of these sets, not just these ones, any of the sets released so far um, of your favourites. What sets would you really like to see next? What do you think is going to come out next after season 9? Um, yeah, so thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in part 2 where we will start with season